What is up DTube Steam Blockchain? So today I want to talk a little bit about building smartphone infrastructure and uh, what I mean with that. So building smartphone infrastructure. I have been interested in phones since maybe 2003 and uh, I remember actually the first device uh, that I used to really explore the internet and the main reason why I was interested in smartphones was because or in the beginning it was phones it wasn't smartphones but it was because it was uh, you could explore stuff beyond the um, the physical 3d physical dimensions so Actually, the first device that I explored the internet with wasn't even a phone. It was uh, the PSP 3000. It came out 2005. I think I got it in maybe 2006 or maybe it was 2007. I think it was maybe 2007. The cool thing with this device was it had a, I think, three and a half inch display, which is very big for uh, 2007. And it had Google. It had a web browser. And it was it was very easy to see. Oh my god, this is gonna take off. Uh, this is kind of huge. So okay, so building a smartphone infrastructure. So it's not just at the beginning. Yes, phones would use a way of communicating basic information, basic data, just as the telephone line. It started off. It started off with just voice, and then they realized, wait a sec, we can use the telephone line to transmit more data. Like, like um, people can connect to the internet via the telephone line, and they they sort of realized, wait a sec, okay, so we can invent something, and but then maybe people realize, wait a sec, we can use this to do more stuff. And that, that's the same thing that's happening with uh, with phones. That when when every that people first start, you just get a phone because they just want to talk to their friends or whatever. But then they realize that it sort of can work as building real infra infrastructure. That that will say that when smartphones get super super powerful, better hardware, better better RAM, better CPU better processor, better GPU, everything. When this is happening and the better computing power, better software, better cloud connection, blockchain, tokenized systems, all this, the smartphone is sort of starting to become uh, an infrastructure node where when everyone has a super powerful device, everyone basically has eventually the same capability. That's not something that is the case at the moment because people Smartphones can still be quite expensive, and if you want to get the best um, best sort of uh, functions and features, you may not be able to afford it. But as the cost is going to go down, eventually everyone's going to have the same kind of capability. Everyone's going to have the same capability to do whatever it is, what they want to do. And then you can really start to look at smartphone infrastructure. What I mean with smartphone infrastructure, well... This, this sort of decentralized world, this, this sort of people want to build, it requires infrastructure. So it's not just that, it's not just that you need like servers and computers in a place, but you need people to have the super high-end smartphones and the best, the best hardware and the best software. You need to have people to have this in their hand and not just that, you also need them to be able to understand what it is they have and and becoming more competent uh, at, at using these sort of gadgets so it is uh, it is a phase where you're building out this smartphone infrastructure where eventually everyone has the best smartphone everyone has the best hardware and now people can focus on okay how do we make how do we make the best how do we make the best software experience to the hardware experience? And the, the, the big thing in software, especially in software language, just started uh, was 2007, 
who does Nate with Bitcoin that this is trying to make the best software for a language in terms of communicating value. And it's quite impressive how it started, okay, 2008, that was even, uh, that was right when the smartphones really started to come with, with the iPhone and all this. So it's very interesting. So for example, we don't know what a human is going to do when, for example, when you have this really good smartphone infrastructure in place, which is currently not in place because a lot of people have, have smartphones that are five years old and, and a lot of people run on outdated software or outdated hardware. That means that you cannot, you cannot really build an amazing, you cannot really build amazing, or you, you can't have at the moment an amazing infrastructure because people do not have that infra infrastructure in their hands, but it's going towards that. And the funny thing is that a lot of software is is earlier. So, for example, Bitcoin was earlier, uh, amazing software that was ahead of its time in many ways. But uh, then people are gonna get caught up, and that will say that when the proper smartphone infrastructure is in place and everyone is running on the best hardware and software, then you can see that everything is working as it should. And uh, as I said, I mean, you don't really know what people are capable of when you have an amazing infrastructure, because that basically means that anyone can make their own app, website, token, uh, research, their own YouTube, their own, their own whatever, blockchain, whatever. We're starting to see this a little bit right now. We see it with... Uh, Steam blockchain, Steam engine, for example, you can make your own token and then smart media tokens are gonna to come out. You see how early this is. You see how, for example, right now, 2019 mid, most people have not good apps on their phone. So a lot of these stuff that is coming out, most of it is just web-based. Uh, and a lot of that is because there's a lot of restrictions on phones. It can be hard to develop an app. Uh, it takes funds. Uh, it, it still costs a lot. But eventually, when all of this is packed in just an app or whatever, it, it is going to be so amazing. And, and that we are just 10 years into this app phase. Just 10 years, right? It's, uh, or you could say it's longer, but with the smartphone era, it's more around 10 years, maybe 12 years. But it, it's, it's very new. It's very new. And how, what I notice is it sort of makes a human into an amazing node. Like when they have the best smartphone and they have the best inf access to the best information, it makes them, they're, they're always like ready to, to receive sort of to receive new data, new input, new exciting stuff, and it will create uh, a better internet, which uh, is gonna be very exciting. Because I think a lot of people underestimate in many ways how, or they think that a lot of people sit on desktop and, and do stuff, but most people are sitting on their phones now, and if there's no good apps, uh, if you have to be on a desktop or a laptop or something like that uh, to to take something in, it just slows down everything. When you have the proper proper apps that works in the phone, it's just gonna 10x everything, and it's gonna make the infrastructure way way better. And it's it, it's it's moving to this quite rapid this phase, where what is gonna happen is when a person sits on the best hardware. Uh, and they can earn faster and faster uh, because they're earning virtually, they're earning borderless. Uh, that means that they can, even at a quicker pace, get even better hardware and better hardware and better hardware that makes better software, better software and all this. And it creates this very interesting positive feedback loop where, I think, yeah, I talked about this in the past also where the human itself is becoming, it becomes all about experiences. Not so much about apps. Uh, <laughs> for example, the way people use YouTube right now, it is, I mean, this is a place where they're just putting on a video, but the, just because brands are so abundant, websites are so abundant, 
it doesn't really matter uh, where you consume it in what app or with what token or or whatever so it's very interesting seeing this infrastructure being laid down and it's interesting because a lot of these hardware companies they're always like competing they're always trying to see how can we give you more value and then maybe eventually they are gonna move fully into making great software yeah it's uh so when is this full infrastructure going to be put into place? It's a very good question. I think it can happen very, very fast. In just a few years, I think a lot of people can sit on the latest, the most high-end phones. Uh, I mean, we all see it in many ways right now. That people easily can have the best high-end phone. But still, people are sort of in this phase where many are two or three years behind. Or you have this thing that you have super maxed out hardware, but the software that they're using is is really not that great. I mean, it's just, why use this when, when you can use something that's better? And uh, you have these locked operating systems that uh, sort of is slowing down innovation a lot. So, and then of course you have the uh, the profit systems that just want to milk at the moment everything from hardware. But eventually when, when there's no more value to gain from hardware because it's so abundant, then we're probably going to see a major shift into software value systems, which is very interesting. Which is very, very interesting. So, I mean, if you look at how humans use their devices right now. Most humans, for example, this is something that most people probably do not think about, but the way humans l use devices right now is they don't let them work for them. Like they're not mining value, they're not doing some AI job, they're not really having their devices being put to work, but they are going to be able to be put to, mer put to work more efficiently by doing some digital work task or or whatever who knows uh, what, what what AI will sort of the possibilities that that AIs can bring but yeah I talked about it a little bit in the past that I don't think like it really makes no sense that people will all sit in sort of the same sort of centralized apps in the future it's it's more that people are gonna build their own customized apps their own customized experiences and, and it might sound like oh well that, that's never gonna happen because then the person needs to know coding and all that but no I mean the software is getting better all the time for example with a lot of um, services right now in a web browser you can sort of block stuff out that you don't like and and uh, it's just a question of when I mean soon you'll be able to add <laughs> widgets and stuff like that from from sort of other services this basically means that eventually you, you you're you're going to have this so you're going to have this blank slate or you can call it a phone it's just going to be like a glass screen or whatever it's just going to be empty white and then you'll be able to add exactly what it is you desire uh, the the kind of data that that you want to see so for example right now with smartphones yes you can have apps on, on your home screen and you can have some widgets but they're no they're, they're not like super sophisticated systems at the moment where you can exactly build your own widgets based on any sort of data input that it can pull from sort of any source because we're gonna move into this phase where a lot of coding languages and everything is trying to move towards open systems where everyone is sort of gravitating towards the best way to do things. And then when we find the best way to do things, and this is something that we see in blockchain, is that we're gonna see this cross chain experiences where people are trying to make, people are trying to connect everything. And connecting everything goes very deep because connecting humans is not just about being able to send some information to another human, but it can be about I don't know, I mean, connecting apps, you know, sure, you can, you can, for example, 
download apps on your phone, but they're not really the information, the data in each app is not really connected to another another app. It's not sort of like you can convert some digital tokens from one app to another. It, it, this is actually the big thing right now that it's moving towards really connecting 100% of all the information so you can create 100% customized experiences and, and it, it still has a long way to go. For example, we never got custom hardware phones. We don't have custom software phones because it takes, I don't know, it takes more computing power, but it, it's heading, it's, it's heading towards, um, it's heading towards a better smartphone infrastructure. And that's why we're seeing so much more new innovation. And it's very interesting because a human can quite quickly see, they can cross check information. So they can see, for example, they can see what the teams are doing in real time. And they can sort of quickly see that, oh, wait a sec, this team is doing better than that team. And then they can say that to the one team that's performing worse. And they can, a human can sort of learn way faster from analyzing in real time success and failure of projects. And it, it, it is this real time feedback loop system that's, that gets quite fascinating. So yeah, that's what I want to talk a little bit about today. It's going to be interesting to see this smartphone infrastructure be laid out. And the easiest way to imagine it is, imagine if every human on the planet had the best high-end smartphone right in their hand. What would they be able to do? Like, <laughs> there is there's so much more you can do with external technology than when you don't have it or when it's slow technology you have. I mean, that, that is so restricting and uh, you really need infrastructure. We see how infrastructure is becoming more compact and more smaller and eventually it's gonna be very, very small. So, for example, take a look at the TV, all, all the stuff that they are, when they're recording some event and then you realize, wait a sec, you can record your own events with your phone and yes you could do this 50 years ago as well but it was just then it was a little bit more I don't know let's say amateur it was way more unprofessional but we see now that we're really starting to blur the lines between professional and sort of homemade let's say that any person can be able to any person can create anything and, uh, and create new data, new data, new information. And it's very interesting how you can, how you can create value from nothing basically. So if you, for example, talk about, you can talk about anything, any event, or you, you can create this uh, association thing where you're creating more value to the original thing because when well, you're talking about something new, so you create this, Tetris double value effect or something when you create these combos and it's very interesting how you can play with various combos and brands and yeah I mean it's it's fascinating and uh, yeah so really cool really cool times and uh, I mean the biggest innovation clearly is that you can send value super fast to another source and it's just that it's not the technology that's bad. It's not that the software is bad. It's just that the infrastructure has, hasn't been laid out yet. That it takes a couple of decades to have great infrastructure being put in people's hands. And then you can really sort of see some cool stuff. Yeah, I wanted to talk a little bit about that because I sort of feel that it's, it's an important thing to talk about. That people don't forget that you can do amazing things. But if you don't have the proper smartphone infrastructure laid out, uh, it's like it's like you're trying. I heard this nice thing, for example, that yeah, you you can have. I mean, in a many way, in many ways, blockchain technology and, and tokens and Bitcoin and all this, it it kind of is like having a, a Ferrari car, a sports car, 
uh, hundred years ago and if you brought that to a city where they only used horses you have to use your Ferrari where the horses are walking and you don't really have an infrastructure laid out for a Ferrari <laughs> so it's like um, you the Ferrari looks useless because you have to you have to you have bad roads that's not optimized for for a Ferrari so it's like this the infrastructure matters a lot the infrastructure sort of is is a lot like it's if you don't have the infrastructure uh, then and you can take infrastructure you can take it deeper for example human systems within themselves uh, the, the information that they're sitting on the human infrastructure and the tech infrastructure and the, um, the society infrastructure I mean it's it's really about making all of this more compact and more more close and uh, it, it takes some time it takes some time but once it's out you get the benefits you enjoy the benefits of the new and uh, we may peak we may come to the point already maybe 2025 where most people have uh, that we really have peaked in, in smartphone infrastructure and that people can only focus on making amazing software and that's going to be exciting that's going to be very very exciting so yeah that's what I want to talk a little bit about today have an awesome day DTube and the Steam blockchain bye bye